Hello, my name is Dr. Ann Anderman, and I would like to welcome you to this bright session called Taking Action on the Social Determinants of Health in Clinical Practice. I am a family doctor and also a public health physician from McGill University in Montreal in Canada. Uh, I also have many other hats. I also work for the Canadian government and also as a global health researcher. I have no conflicts of interest. So there are many complex clinical cases, and I think some of the most challenging that I deal with in my own clinical practice are those that combine complex medical and social issues. And of course, making patients healthy is more than just dealing one-on-one -on -one as a clinician with one's own patient, but really thinking about that patient's family and even their community, because all of these affect the patient's own health. And while we do a lot of work in diagnosis and treatment of patients, we also understand that the whole continuum of strategies is required to make entire populations healthy, prevention, health promotion, and action on the social determinants of health. There are many high-level documents that talk about how health workers can also take action on the social determinants in their own clinical practice, but often they do not have very specific details for busy practitioners. So a key question I have is, what can busy clinicians do in their own day-to-day -day practice to address the social determinants of health? And that's why we started in 2010, the CLEAR collaboration. This is a collaboration um, with many different researchers and policymakers in many countries around the world who shared the same interest to understand how can we better support different marginalized populations that we serve by taking action on the social determinants of health and clinical practice. And what does that really mean? How can we take action? And so we developed the CLEAR Toolkit. It was developed to be able to provide guidance, really simplified guidance um, that would be useful on the front lines to help treat, ask, refer, and advocate for marginalized populations in our areas. Health workers are definitely in a privileged position. They're first-hand witnesses to the different health and social challenges of their patients. One health worker from Brazil says, it is hard. There are families in a very bad situation. Once I visited a house where the mother was unemployed, single mother, five kids, the mother was handicapped, and her son goes to the streets in order to ask for money and food, and the neighbors helped with food. So very complex issues and complex situations. And what can health workers do? Well, there's a number of things. First, health workers can make a difference by treating the immediate health problems that their patients are faced with. But also very important is asking about these underlying social problems, referring to various local social support resources and also advocating for more supportive environments for health within the broader community. So this is a long process that we have been through trying to create this clear toolkit. And it's been a very participatory and iterative process. And we welcome you to take part in this process and help us make an even better approaches to improving health of our patients by addressing the social determinants. The research program really sought to answer one key question, which is what are some of the specific actions that health workers are already using or can use to help support families and individual vulnerable patients, including children, by taking action on the social determinants of health. Um, a summary of our literature review has been published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal, and there's also an accompanying podcast at the link below. But health workers can do many things to help support patients at the patient level, at the practice level, and the community level, and I'll go into more detail. At the patient level, it's possible to be caring, listen respectfully, and avoid reproducing societal prejudices asking about the underlying social problems that patients might be facing. One practitioner from Pakistan says, if we don't know which kind of problem a kid is facing, 
mental, psychological, or physical, how can we help them? We can also refer to sources of support. Someone from Brazil said, yes, they trust us. If there is a work accident and they come to us, we have to help, and if necessary, refer to other services. Health workers are a reliable source of information. At the practice level, Health workers are also able to map out the different referral resources in their local communities to know where to send different patients for support. Many children are living in the street. They do not know where to go to stay safe, and health workers can refer them to some NGOs. If the children came to these NGOs, their life would be changed. They would be safe. Health workers can also provide outreach to those who are most in need and gain their confidence. And at the community level, there's also a great deal that health workers can do. They're very important for engaging communities and community leaders. One person from Bangladesh said, our organization created a community group and they involved the respected community people, leaders and teachers, and they arranged meetings and workshops and awareness programs with them. And through these programs, common people learned our organization's name and activities and we were slowly accepted into the community. Now people respect us and they want us to continue our work. Health workers can collect local data and narratives of health inequities. And they can also communicate with influential people and lobby for community development and greater support for vulnerable populations. From Pakistan, someone said, health workers should go first and see village elders to educate them. These village elders can educate people within their circle of influence. And in this way, the situation will improve. And they can advocate for the rights of vulnerable and marginalized persons, including greater access to health and education and social services. So in conclusion, health workers cannot change the world on their own, and intersectoral approaches and multiple levels are critical in taking action, but health workers still have an important role to play in addressing the social determinants of health. They can avoid being part of the problem, they can better support vulnerable patients, and they can also catalyze action and join partnerships to mobilize local change and create supportive environments for health. The CLEAR toolkit has now been translated into over a dozen languages that are available free of charge for download from our website. There is also a trainer's manual, and this can help to adapt the toolkit to your own local context. If you're interested in piloting the CLEAR toolkit in your area, please feel free to contact me. I would like to thank our funders for their support. And I also put this up in case you're interested in some further reading. But to finish off, I would like to make a proposal that we would like to hear from you. We would like you to share your experiences with us, and we would be happy also to post these experiences on our website. How have you taken action on the social determinants of health in your own clinical practices in the context where you work? I will be happy to show two examples of clips from two physicians who are working with me here in Canada, one from Egypt and the other one from Jamaica, to tell how in their clinical practices they came across the complex medical and social challenges faced by their patients and how they went about reacting and responding to these challenges. It's not always easy and we don't always feel that we have the tools, but these are things that can be taught and supported and strengthened. And we would like to make a movement of health workers who can share their expertise and their knowledge and their experience of how they have tackled the social determinants in their local context. So please do send us your video clips, even taken by your phone, and we would be very happy to share these and to put them up on our website. Thank you again for your time. And here we will show you next two of these short video clips from two physicians from Egypt and from Jamaica. Thank you again for your attention. Hello, my name is Labib Girgis. I'm a doctor from Egypt. After graduating from medical school, I worked as a general practitioner in primary health care unit serving rural areas in Egypt. 
These units serve in disadvantaged communities, where I came face to face to people living in dire situations. Early in my career, I encountered a really strange story of an eight years old boy who had fainting attacks on only Saturday and Wednesday of each week during morning assembly at his primary school. I examined the child and sent him to lab many times, but I found nothing. Then it came to my mind to ask the mother what's happening at home during these, day during these days. The mother told me a strange thing, that during these particular days, it wasn't the eight years old boy's turn to have breakfast. It was always the turn of his siblings. He had many brothers and sisters. I was astonished to hear the story. This family di didn't have the capacity to feed their children daily. Of course, I know the context where I'm working that majority of the people live in poverty, but I didn't imagine that it could face something I could face something like that. At this moment I realized that providing medical care to patients is not only enough to heal to cure them. There are many underlying non medical causes which directly affect the patient's life and in turn cause the repetitive appearance of medical problems, which was the case in the situation I found myself in. Coming to Canada, I had the chance to work with Dr. Anne Anderman in the CLEAR project, and I learned that there is a way to train doctors to ask about social causes of poor health of their patients, and to further assist them by sending them to the, place that could, to, place, to the places that could provide them with the proper help they need. I always remember the story of the poor child who had the fainting pounds. If I had known that about the CLEAR project that, at that time, I would I could have helped him in a, in a better way. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Shamil McFarlane. I have been a clinician for the past six years. I did my medical degree at the University of the West Indies in Jamaica. And um, I did my internship in the public healthcare system there, as well as uh, two years after that. And um, I learned a lot of things about the healthcare system and most importantly, the social determinants of health that affected persons in the healthcare system. Um, the community health aid, which is a person that lives in that community, I would ask her to just make a note. I'm only there once every three months anyway. So during that time period, if she could make a note of all the um, shut-ins whether they were elderly or not but all the shut-ins who couldn't make it to the clinic and then I would go out and try and see those people who couldn't make it to the clinic um, and that was that helped a lot I found that even though it was once every three months I was making a difference where they were being seen by a physician um, you know on a quarterly basis and uh,